A narcissist has to stay in control of the situation and keep getting supply from you at all times possible, especially when you are not in their physical presence. They have to influence you to keep you under their thumb. And one of the easiest ways and the best ways to do so is via texting. When they can't control you directly, they control you through their weird texting habits. And that is what we are going to talk about in this episode. Hi, I am Danish, and in this episode, we're going to talk about five weird and selfish texting habits of a narcissist. Before we get started, please make sure that you're subscribed to this channel by pressing the subscribe button and please push that bell icon to stay updated. Also, if you're listening to this episode on a podcast channel, make sure to follow and subscribe as well. Number one, they text you whenever they want to text you. They don't care about your boundaries. They don't care about the time. If you're sleeping, if you're waking up, who you are with, if you're in a meeting, None of that is important for them. What is important for a narcissist is to get your attention and have it on them all, at all times possible. Why? A narcissist thinks that they own you out of their entitlement. You are theirs. So your attention has to be on them. You can't focus on your things. You can't focus on your job. You can't focus on your basic life functioning activities. It has to be on them at all times. If it is not, it is seen as a form of betrayal and disloyalty. So you become hooked to your phone. You, you, you constantly are near to your phone because now you start becoming anxious and hypervigilant around the texting behavior. You don't know when you're going to get their message and when you would be required to respond to them. Also, quite early, it is very intense. It's always back and forth, back and forth, day and night. You're constantly on phone and you think that they are very, inten very into you. It's quite intense. They are trying to know you, but it's not. They need this attention. They demand this attention from you because they are exerting control over you. They are kind of getting you into the trap. And when you are in the trap, they leave you in the middle of nowhere. Because now that they have lost the interest in you, the devaluation starts and you are left in this bubble of chaos. They got you addicted to this texting pattern first and now they leave you and you have to deal with this altered nervous system, this anxiety, this stress, the urges that you have now on, on your own. They literally change your biochemistry through this texting behavior, through this constant demand for attention via texting. Habit number two, they will be constantly online texting other people when they are with you physically. They are on their phone constantly with other people, with other sources of supply and treating you as if you do not exist. Or they would be online and you would be online as well, but would not respond to you when you are expecting some kind of response from them. They make you feel ignored and this ignorance is what kills your self-worth. When a narcissist does this, it, they are confessing that they do not consider you as an important part of your of their life as you consider them. They do not care about you. They do not care for your presence. They don't see you as a valuable person that they are attached. They just got your attention. They got you, got you in the trap. They sealed the deal. Now that you, you are theirs, they don't have to care about anything else because they know they have got you. And this is one of the ways of devaluing you so that you can keep begging, you keep asking for that attention, you keep questioning yourself, what did I say wrong? What did I do wrong that made you do this, that made you ignore me? Do I need, need to change something in my behavior for you to change it, for you to become the person that you were in the early stages of the relationship? That is the kind of justification, rationalization, thinking that happens in our head when we are victimized by this kind of devaluation. Number three, sexting. Sexting is another behavior, texting behavior of a narcissist. Now, there's nothing wrong with te sexting, but when it comes to a narcissist, their texting is all about sexting, especially quite early in the relationship, just right after the initial con uh, contact. They send provocative Im images and expect you to send the same without caring about how you feel, without knowing if you want to do so or not. They just somehow want to jump, jump in and open your clothes via texting. That's what's going on. And that is what they do. That is one of the ways they degrade you. 
because you may participate in the sexting you may share stuff but later when they start devaluing you when they start putting you down when they start degrading you you start feeling embarrassed you feel a lot of shame and you start berating yourself for participating in the early sexting not being able to see it for what it was and so on but you need to know that it is one of their addictive behaviors they just prey on people for the same very same purpose they have these other people in line and they just go to them alternatively and ask for nudes ask for pictures provocative pictures and all of that stuff and once they get them they use this person and the pictures and then forget about this person forever or temporary until they need it again and come back number 4 at night or some of the time they would reach out and have a very witty fun filled conversation heart filled conversation with you you would feel connected you would feel seen they do it especially somewhere near the devaluation stage where this is given as a bread probably they are in a good mood or they want something from you or they they want to prevent you from leaving there is some kind of ulterior motive that you can't see but this texting is quite witty fun filled connected it feels heartfelt but it's not and ultimately it just is is one of those special and unique experiences that you have with them you feel fulfilled but then they deprive you of the same and this kind of conversation either does not happen again throughout the duration of the relationship or it happens after a very very long time when they want something from you and they know they won't get it easily what it does to you is it just reinforces that your trauma bonding it it makes you keep coming back craving for the same intensity that you felt once in that conversation it increases your con- cognitive dissonance and you ask questions like well maybe he is not that bad she is not so narcissistic why else would she or he have such a heartfelt conversation with me through text they they don't see you at all it's just more about how they feel and what they want once they get it Da. Number 5 and the last one. They leave you hanging by hooking you with a small text without interest or content. For example, they might send a text early in the morning at 9 a.m. saying good morning. But then when you respond instantly, they leave you hanging in there. It's like them pressing a button in you, eliciting a reaction, seeing that you are still there and then running away. And then taking some kind of sadistic pleasure from seeing you suffer from you wanting to have that conversation this mind game of back and forth push and pull drives a person crazy because you do not know how to respond to this kind of behavior you do not know where you are you don't know what your status is you don't know where you stand in this relationship you don't know what's happening because it's confusing they would ignore you and if you ignore back then they would come in and drop this little text hi hello good morning whatever you respond back and you think maybe now they have realized and then they drop you like a hot potato and it is the same pattern again it keeps happening over and again and again and again until you just feel like you have turned into a shell of yours that is it for this video this episode i would really like to know what weird texting habit did you experience with a narcissist drop your drop your experiences in the comments below and let me know what it was like for you i will talk with you in the next one till then let the healing begin